What's up, people? It's your girl Adiola. Today we're starting with good news, ladies and gentlemen. Behold the new Mobolaji Johnson Rail Station in Ebute Meta, Lagos, commissioned on Thursday by the President Muhammadu Buhari. Oh my goodness, isn't that beautiful? So this kind of train station is possible in Nigeria. Jesus is Lord. For decades, our politicians made us believe that anything good cannot happen in Nigeria. They've conditioned our mind that electricity can never be stable, that our roads can never be fixed. When they're spending years repairing the same road, it is for us to believe it can never be done. They made us believe we cannot have nice trains. They will always have an excuse. You guys remember 2014, while I was still working at Sahara TV, and I asked my father in the law, oh, that's to say, don't you cook where you're welcome, so in case you're watching. He was a special assistant on media and publicity to President Olusegun Obasanjo, and he was also the senior special assistant on public affairs to President Goodluck Jonathan. So in 2014, I asked him why they were not giving us nice trains. We see the pictures of the rails, sir. They look like locomotives from 1950. What does Second hand, third hand brought from China. We are not America. Why can't we, we have are, brand new You trains. cannot have brand new trains because, you know, the economy cannot support that. Can you imagine? They were giving us locomotives. And besides that, we are using... Why? Old, I thought we, we are, are the largest economy in Africa. Why uh, uh, we are we the largest, that? you know, we are the largest market. We are the largest economy. It does not mean that all the money is not going to be used to, be go, and, to go and buy trains and coaches. Wow, you cannot have nice trains because you are not America. That was what the man said. I said, shoo, how is it now possible that we have nice trains at many places in Nigeria now? And nice train stations that looks better than our present international airport in Lagos. Benny, Uncle Doni, ah, you should be hiding your face. Hey, see, bad one. Any politician that tells you that you can never have good hospitals, you can never have good roads, you can never have stable electricity, they are deceiving you, Iran, you want about Lori, Iran. This is an evidence that that if they really want to do the job, they will get it done. Amen, somebody. So huge shout out to the Buaris administration for this straight. Like seriously, when you guys do well, we are not afraid to say it when you do well. We just wish you will be consistent in doing well. Kudos to the Buaris administration for this train because it's a federal project. And huge shout out to the Minister of Transportation, that is my father, Amechi. You guys have done well. Mm. But don't just do this in Lagos. I mean, we appreciate that you're doing this in Lagos. You get what I'm saying? It's mainly because Lagos is the center of commerce in Nigeria, but there are so many other states as well. If you guys can develop all the train stations across Nigeria like this, oh, for that, I'm telling you, people will be rushing to come to Nigeria. <laughs> Buari's administration actually started this train station and completed it, so huge shout out to them for this accomplishment. We think it's beautiful. That's exactly why you are there, by the way. You are not doing the people any favor. Thank you for doing your job, is what I want to say. So, I am super excited to see this, but at the same time, I want to beg the government to please and ensure proper maintenance because let's not forget that we have to pay back huge loans yes yeah, so we have to pay back loans to china you know this station must make money <laughs> not for us to be hearing that uh, something broke down there's no, no no we cannot hear that trains are not working proper maintenance is very important at this train station so that we can make profit and pay back our loans i get busy say so understand also while we're working on trains let's also work on our roads and up to the loan let us work on making sure that all our roads are fixed especially in east Nigeria. I have traveled a little bit in Nigeria. The roads in the east are ah, <laughs> the roads in eastern part of Nigeria is a different case entirely. Please let us work on that and please let us work on security across the country. So now that we see that our train stations can look this nice, hopefully our airports across Nigeria can also look this nice. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> you guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Real quick, please move closer. Vanguard newspaper, I want to beg you guys, in case anybody is watching from Vanguard in a duel, can you please stop using headlines like this in your story? As in, Benny, 
look at what they wrote. See, apparently it is one group like that in Germany. They even opened a campaign office for the man. But why would you say Nigerians in the in diaspora endorse Yaya Bello for 2023 presidency? Ah, the devil is like, can you imagine? You cannot put all of us in one box. What do you mean by Nigerians in diaspora? Be specific. I'm just saying, I'm not telling anybody not to endorse whoever they want to endorse. But you cannot be putting us all in one box as if we are all endorsing Yaya Bello. Eh? Can you imagine? Back to the center. Anyway, now that we have settled that, let's talk about Buhari's interview. Ah, Baba. So last Thursday, the president, Mahmoud Buhari, granted a live interview. It was the first time in several years that he has allowed Nigerian journalists in Nigeria to interview him. Mm -hmm. So it was boring as usual. No offense to Mr. President, but the man likes to put us to sleep whenever he's talking. Plus, he didn't even answer so many of the questions. He likes to beat around the bush, saying a lot without actually saying anything. I have to give it up, though. To all the journalists that were there, I see some people saying, how come they didn't ask follow-up questions, this is that shoe. Let me tell you, what you guys are not seeing are the 20 or 30 people behind the camera that were put there just to intimidate the journalists. Not like they were intimidated, I'm sure they were not intimidated, but these people, they like to censor everything. The security people, the SSS, all his aides, the chief of staff, everybody, people that didn't need to be in that room. They will fill that room up with people just trying to intimidate the journalists. That is just how they rule. Anyway, the most important question that every everyone would like to know right now is what is Buhari's plan for peace in the eastern part of Nigeria? And this is what he said. That's hip hop. It's just like a dot in Asaku. And the way they are spread all over the country, having businesses, having property, I think hip hop doesn't know what they are talking about. We said we'll talk to them in the language they understand. We'll organize the police and the military to pursue them. Wow. So basically, he's still maintaining speaking to them in the language that they understand. He did not get the memo. I wish they would explain to him that, do you not understand what you're saying by this? He repeated the statement, by the way. As I said, we are going to treat them in the language they will understand. Wow. And I don't even know what he meant by saying that in three weeks' time, everything will be different. We have given the police and the military power to be ruthless. And you watch it, in a few weeks' time, there will be a difference. What does that mean? I know they asked him about Twitter ban, by the way, and this is what he said. What about Twitter? Twitter? Yes. That I will give to myself. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, still on the southeast, Mr. President. <laughs> What's that? So he did not answer the question. Wahoo. Now, regarding insecurity in the Northeast, he blamed poverty. This is Boko Haram. Is it our people, that we, is it Nigerians, all people coming out? You see, they are Nigerians, most of them. I think uh, we have a problem of uh, unemployment. Uh, the level of poverty is almost unimaginable. Okay, I, I mean, now, what he said about bandits makes me believe that this government is deceiving itself. We are giving it less uh, publicity because we don't, we don't want to... Uh, uh, make them aware that uh, we are taking them head on. Can you imagine? We don't make public statements about our success against bandits and terrorists because we don't want bandits to know that we are taking them head on. Wow, who is lying here? <laughs> it's also very pathetic the way he sees us young people. He sees us as if we are just misbehaving. So I told them, I said they should tell the youth that if they want jobs, they will behave themselves make sure Nigeria is secure so that people can come and invest. Can you imagine? And then as usual, he likes to blame others for everything. He blamed the governors for insecurity in their states. I will give you one example of recent. Two governors from the southwest, they meet either monthly or quarterly, you know, and discuss the security within that level. If it is above them, they pass it on. They will know what is happening in their constituencies. They just can't go around and win election and then sit tight and think somebody will do their job for them. I just send them back. I mean, come on. At least take some responsibility as the president. He's still blaming the previous administration for everything that goes wrong. And of course, the price of oil that dropped, he's blaming that as well. I would like you to check how much we were earning from 1999 to 2014. Our production. If you check, you will find out the average production was 2.1 million barrels a day. And then, of course, when they asked him about appointing people from other parts of the country in key security positions, besides the north, he just beat around the bush. These positions have to be earned. 
you, you put somebody who has been in the mill to tell you the truth on individual basis, all these chaps, they, they do me. Because I want to do it, but I, I don't know them. I have forgotten them. Some of them, I, I don't know them. You know, based on what he said, I guess only Northerners deserve promotion whenever it's time for him to appoint people. That, that is all he's saying. And then, as you guys are aware, this government is spending $1.9 billion US dollars on a train that will connect Nigeria to Niger Republic. And they were asking him, why are we spending money on that? Why are we even doing that right now? When there's poverty in the land, we're not even fixing our roads. Why are we trying to make a train to go to Niger Republic? Did you hear what he said? So you people, in 1885, you sat down with the ruler and the pencil and draw lines. I say, I have first cousins in Niger. You can't absolutely cut them off. The rail, look at the plan, if you read the plan, how we are rehabilitating the rail. We want them to come through Nigeria. Hey, Jesus, he has family in Niger Republic, Father. Okay. Is this man? So is he from Niger Republic now, or is from Nigeria? Why is it Nigeria's job to build a train to Niger Republic? And if he has family there. So the rest of us, what are we to him? I thought he's our president. So now he cares not about his family in Niger Republic. Jesus is Lord. Ha! Ah, the devil is a liar. We have suffered. Oh. We have really suffered in Nigeria. Overall, if you ask me, Buhari scored zero in this interview. I don't think that he has any clue on issues that are dead to people's minds. He confirmed to Nigerians that the Fulani headers are his number one priority and that he will do anything to protect them. He persisted in his disdain and disregard for the Igbos and betrayed his lack of intellectual depth, goofing on almost all the questions. And while I like to know what you guys think about this interview, I just love this review by somebody called Nefertiti on Twitter. She said, Arise TV proved that Buari is incapable. He's against restructuring. He has no comment on Twitter ban. He sees Niger Republic as his cousins. <laughs> he thinks that open grazing is good for Nigeria. He's come convinced that South East cannot lead his army. He views NSAS as an attempt to remove him. Mm -hmm. He does not understand subsidy. He thinks that herders or farmers clash is village fighting. And he thinks that Boko Haram terrorism is members of one tribe killing each other. And lastly, she said 53% of youth unemployment is because the youth are misbehaving. That's his mindset. That's his mentality. You guys remember he once said that we the youth that we are lazy. Can you imagine? And then she ended it by saying, Nigerians, you wasted eight years on a toddler as your president. That's it. That's it. That, that, mm, mm, mm. You know, I can never say that. I didn't say that. She said that. You guys know me. I, I'm way too gentle. Let me know what you guys think about her review. Let me know what your review is. You guys not know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Mali, ladies and gentlemen, this is old news. I'm sure by now you've heard that in May, that was last month, a Mali woman gave birth to nine babies at once. Whoa, nine babies. Ah, hey, it is well. So the government of Mali literally had to make an arrangement for her to go to Morocco where she could have better medical care for her to have her babies. And she alone had 10 doctors, 18 nurses, and many paramedics attend to her and each of her babies. You know, right now she owns the Guinness World Record for most babies born at the same time. Nine babies. Is. So, we were still talking about her when we heard about a South African woman who announced having 10 children at once. I was like, what? What are these African women eating? As in, I mean, I know that African women, I know we're very strong. <laughs> But to have 10 children at once, I'm like, wow, as in, <laughs> that is beyond incredible. But then, the government of her province, as well as the government of South Africa as well, said that they have no record of such happening at any of their hospitals. The Gauteng Provincial Government conducted a thorough check with all hospitals in the province to establish the veracity or otherwise of the report. None of the hospitals in the province, public or private, have any records of such a delivery in their facilities. Okay, I'm like, you know, I'm a bit confused. I'm not sure who to believe. I wish that the woman would just post pictures of the children. We see her pregnant or with big tummy, but we have not seen any pictures of the kids. So do you think that anybody would just make up having 10 children at once? Because I'm really, really confused. Let me know what you guys think about this, you know? In the meantime, we'll keep looking <laughs> and we'll keep waiting for her to post pictures of her kids. But right now we have not seen them. If she posts the pictures of the kids, we'll update you on this story that, okay, it is true but for now it looks like they're not finding evidence anyway you guys not do know much guess what i'm just keeping it real so 
So still on South Africa, the Minister of Health is now under what they call a special leave after he was accused of corruption. Ladies and gentlemen, the man allegedly awarded COVID-19 related contracts to a communications company controlled by his former associates, people that had worked for him in the past. I'm like, that's wrong. We're talking about contracts worth about 11 million US dollars. Then we got a senior counsel to explain that in fact it was a normal memo that there is no way a minister can actually uh, participate in uh, appointment of a service provider allocation of the budget that gets done by the administration wow so he apologized publicly but the government said that putting him on leave would allow him to attend court hearings on the case so some people are saying that it's suspension it's not leave i don't know so now the minister of tourism has been appointed as the acting minister of health keep in mind that this minister of tourism she has done it all madam mamoloko ungubane the same woman has been the minister of energy in 2017 and then she was minister of communications briefly in 2017 as well and then minister of science and technology in 2018 and then she became the minister of tourism in 20 and now she's the acting minister of health i'm like see <laughs> anyway we'll keep you guys posted on the development in south africa you guys know i don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real so moving on to Lesotho, well, we're still kind of in South Africa, you know. As you guys know, the government of South Africa has been banning alcohol sales and consumption since COVID started. They've been lifting the ban on and off, discouraging people from gathering to drink in order to limit COVID transmission. Well, some diplomats from Lesotho, diplomats, if I, you guys know that Lesotho is inside South Africa. Anyway, so some diplomats started bringing in duty-free alcohol into South Africa, not paying duty, and then they started reselling them in bars and restaurants in South Africa. Can you imagine? Are you getting what? As in diplomats and their spouses going to sell alcohol in bars and restaurants in South Africa. <laughs> So, of course, the South African government has accused them of illicit trade in duty-free alcohol. About 12 Basoto diplomats have been declared persona non grata by South Africa. They said that they've abused their diplomatic privileges and they were given 72 hours to leave South Africa. Wow. I cannot even imagine your country appointing you as a diplomat, sending you to another country, and then you getting kicked out for selling alcohol in bars. <laughs> Jesus, that is embarrassing. Anyway, we'll keep you guys posted on this development. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So real quick, I told you guys that this coming Sunday, 8 p.m. Nigerian time, 3 p.m. New York time, that I'll be bringing back Madame Grace Sofrit, the founder of Lifecard International Real Estate Company. Like I told you guys the last time, those who patronized her last year and bought the 5.5 million naira land, their land is now worth 14.5 million. By the way, she's looking for people that are willing to sell. Oh, she's been asking people to sell. Nobody wants to sell. What is happening, you guys? <laughs> Your land has more than doubled. Haba, your land has appreciated from 5.5 million to 14.5 million. Why don't you want to sell it now? Anyway, it looks like nobody wants, <laughs> nobody wants to sell because of how the land has appreciated within one year. So she will be coming on the show this Sunday night. We'll be live on Facebook, on YouTube, as well as on Twitter. And you guys will be able to join us live to ask our questions live and direct. So if you're planning on asking us questions, if you're planning on joining us in the studio that day, make sure that you have your camera ready. So she'll be come to answer all your questions why the land appreciated so quickly and she'll be talking about new opportunities as well lands that will also appreciate hopefully like this so she'll be talking about new opportunities as well as shortlets and apartments that you can buy that are already available as well so i'm really looking forward to our time together like i said that will be sunday 8 p.m nigerian time and 3 p.m new york time so i look forward to that so before i sign out i have a question for you guys what do you call the people of lesotho mm-hmm Mm. I actually mentioned it briefly in this episode. Let me know in the comment section. People from Lesotho are not allowed to answer that question, by the way. <laughs> so let me know in the comment section. What do you call the people from Lesotho? All right, y'all. It's been real, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my channel, we're watching you on Plasma TV. Press the subscribe button and the bell button. Until next time, I'm going to see you all later. Peace out. <laughs>